The 1st Kaiser Franz Infantry Regiment was originally formed in 1715 in the Trier Electorate and transferred into Imperial service in 1716. Franz Stefan Herzog zu Lothringen started owning the regiment in 1726 as the Inhaber. He would become Kaiser Franz I of the Holy Roman Empire in 1745 and the regiment would bear the Kaiser name for the entirety of the Seven Years' War. In 1769, regimental numbers were introduced and the unit was designated the 1st Kaiser Infantry Regiment, with the name changing depending on which Kaiser was in power. By the time the Napoleonic Wars rolled around, the Kaiser Franz unit was recruiting in Moravia, making it a German infantry regiment. Therefore, the uniforms were completely white, with dark red facings and yellow buttons. It primarily used the Austrian metal helmet, but slowly phased it out for the Chateau starting in 1806. Officers wore a dark greatcoat with a gold sash to denote their rank and this put them apart from the entire white line, making them a target for French voltigeurs and an easy rallying point for Austrian troops. Each soldier had a Torrenster, or backpack, covered by fur and inside of which contained all the soldiers' fighting and living equipment. During the Napoleonic Wars, the unit was organized like any other Austrian regiment. It relied heavily on its infantry, and its reliance was perfectly summed up in a quote from Putnam's Monthly, which is a 19th century newspaper. Quote, the infantry, and in this respect it is similar to the English infantry, is more distinguished by its action in masses than by its agility in light infantry service. But the German and Hungarian infantry generally imposed by their solidity, and have more than once received cavalry in line without deigning to form square, and wherever they have formed squares, the enemy cavalry could seldom break them up." End quote. This quote was from an unknown witness of the Battle of Aspern Essling, one of Austria's few victories against France throughout the entire Napoleonic Wars. The unit began these wars with two battalions, one titled the Lieb, or Life Battalion, and another one titled the Obers, or Colonel's Battalion. It also had a third depot battalion, which comprised two companies and wasn't present in the field unless mustered. Both the 1st and the 2nd Battalion had six companies of 180 fusiliers each. However, due to attrition and combat losses, this number was hardly ever maintained. Two grenadier companies were attached to the regimental staff and often were detached from that to form grenadier battalions with other companies. Units were heavily subdivided to the point where platoons could individually maneuver rather than relying on the whole company. However, this was rare in a battlefield setting and more often used in urban fighting, skirmishing, and camp duties. In 1793, the unit had two full battalions, and this unit increased to five battalions in 1805. At the outbreak of the French Revolutionary Wars, the colonel was Gerhard Rosalmini, and, would lead, and the unit would leave its depot stations in late 1792, with both battalions occupying defensive positions along the Cordon Line in the winter of 1792 and 1793. The Life Battalion joined Wurmser's counterattacks on March 1793, while the Colonel's Battalion remained in reserve, garrisoning Holy Roman Empire towns and cities along the Rhine in case of a French counterattack. By May, both battalions had been sent in the Major General Hotze's Brigade and Commander Graf Wurmser's Independent Corps of Austrians and French emigres, and the army dug in in late August. Skirmishes would take place throughout the month of September. The regiment ended up capturing three cannons and powder carts at the conclusion of the fighting, and 50 men would be killed with another 223 wounded. In total, 31 guns and 12 standards, along with a ton of other army equipment, was captured in the battle and the following pursuit. The army continued marching towards Strasbourg and engaged in a nasty battle in the forest around New Weiler. Four companies of the Colonel Battalion were chosen to advance into the forest, but heavy canister fire ensured that they weren't able to maintain their gains. Out of 11 officers and 750 men, 36 were left dead and 98 wounded. Due to these combat losses and additional losses due to disease, the regiment was placed in reserve and brought back to the front line in mid-November, just in time for a French counteroffensive of that year. A series of winter attacks and counterattacks would take place from November to January of 1795, and the units took heavy casualties, even losing 100 men to the French as prisoners of war in early December. At the village of Neuweiler, three companies of the Life Battalion struck up a heroic defense, but were ultimately wasted to the point where they barely fought their way out of encirclement. Colonel Russell Meany was taken prisoner in the fight, along with four other officers, and the regiment fought for 36 days straight in combat, with two-thirds of the regiment lacking greatcoats. By January 1794, the unit was temporarily led by Major Johnson and could only muster 17 officers and 470 men, a stark reduction from the original 2,000 men deployed to this front. Colonel Graf Nimch was given command of the regiment as Russell Meany was promoted to general after returning from being a French prisoner. In 1794, the unit would be reassigned to the Dutch theater of war, which had been changing hands multiple times over the War of the First Coalition. The French troops were freshly trained, and the raids on the Austrian lines over the winter was merely the French testing their strength. Jourdan continued his advance and began to force small German states into armistice, surrender, or negotiate them out of the war entirely. 
The Kaiser Franz infantry was sent with Major General von Monfrau to Frankfurt in order to continue defending the army's retreat, and on June 13th the French caught up, firing at the city for 17 consecutive hours and forcing the defenders to scramble to put out fires. They left on the 15th of June and were forced to cross over rough mountain passes into August and back home to Austria. The retreat continued until Archduke Charles managed to march more reinforcements up to counter the French. However, despite these new reinforcements, Jourdan continued to beat the Austrians on the 17th and 20th. Archduke Charles would not be so easily defeated, and he counterattacked, defeating Jourdan at Neumarkt and Tenning on the 22nd and 23rd, respectively. Jourdan began his retreat, but not until General Vartenslaber's corps got their fair share. On the morning of the 24th, Vartenslaber launched a vicious pursuit of the French, wiping out the entire French 23rd Demi Brigade, scattering the rearguard into the mountains, and they continued moving onwards. The regiment was sent to garrisons in September, however the 3rd Reserve Battalion was marched out of Krakow the month prior and arrived at the front with roughly a thousand men under now Lt. Col. Winkel. At the town of Biberach, the battalion formed up as a rear guard, and on October 2nd they held the position the whole day, despite being completely cut off from the rest of the army. The French offered them surrender, but the battalion fought on into the night until they realized they were truly done for and, after being attacked on all sides, they surrendered. Lt. Col. Bankel fell into a swamp before the surrender and was taken prisoner by some French chasseurs. He had this to say about the incident, quote, Chasseurs of Cheval suddenly attacked me, and after they had taken everything from me, I was called to Busenberg, where I also met Captain Lagrain from the battalion, end quote. You can only imagine his surprise when he found out that the entire battalion had surrendered after he saw them valiantly fighting on while being led back a prisoner himself. The following investigation into the surrender led to the discovery that at least 100 men had been killed or wounded during the fighting, amounting to more than 10% of the battalion's entire strength, with the rest being captured. The 3rd Battalion was negotiated to return under the condition that they couldn't take up arms against the French for the rest of the year. The battalion was assigned siege work at Kehl in November of 1796, technically not breaking their contract with the French. During the siege, the colonel of the regiment and the 3rd Battalion's commander decided to scout the enemy's defenses near dusk and were attacked by a French skirmishing party. Four grenadiers came up to defend them, with two dying and the other two receiving the Silver Medal of Bravery. All three battalions of the regiment were united after the French surrendered Kell, and the units marched to Alfenbach for defensive duties. On January 29th, 100 men of the regiment were assigned to watch duty, and the French launched a nighttime attack, penetrating the outer defenses of the walls. Ensign Kuhn, in his second act of bravery on the campaign, jumped over the walls with 40 men and hit the French in the flank, capturing most of them and losing only 4 men dead and 10 wounded. The fortress was surrendered just 3 days later, and the unit was sent to winter quarters again. On March 10th, they were paraded with 54 senior officers, 132 NCOs, and 1,981 rank and file. Archduke Charles was sent to the Italian theater in a vain attempt to stop Napoleon from achieving victory there, and command fell to Feldzeugmeister Latour. The French army was severely under strength, but General Hoche of the Army of the Rhine decided to advance in order to draw Austrian troops away from Napoleon. On the 17th of April, the armistice ended and Hoche crossed the Rhine. The Kaiser Franz Infantry Regiment again found themselves near Kell and was pushed back by French grenadiers. A counterattack was most certain but unsuccessful, and night fell with the French controlling the town. A second attack was launched the next day, with a battalion of the regiment fighting viciously through the defenses and into the street until being forced to retire. During the fighting, Lt. Col. Johnson fell wounded and was nearly captured by the French. Only the intervention of three wounded Austrian soldiers managed to repulse them until a French general arrived and ordered the French grenadiers to let the Austrians go. All three men would receive medals, and the battle became the final conflict of the 1st Infantry Regiment in the War of the First Coalition. Overall, four years of constant fighting had achieved nothing for Austria. The hundreds of dead and wounded of the 1st Kaiser Franz Infantry Regiment had all, unfortunately, suffered in vain. However, the unit would soon get its revenge. A 4th Battalion was raised during this year and numbered 1,251 men by July. By January of 1798, the 1st Infantry Regiment was ordered to remain in a city near the French border called Breisgau. They would be among the few who wouldn't be sent back to their home recruiting grounds. The unit at this point numbered 3,332 men in service. Peace would last for barely a year, with the French declaring war in March 1799. The regiment was assigned to Archduke Charles' Army of Bavaria, whose plan was to decisively attack one of the smaller French Republican armies. His enemy would once again be General Jourdan and his Army of Maine. Archduke Charles prepared for an aggressive strike, and the 1st Regiment was split with the 1st Battalion going to the 1st Column of Attack, and the 2nd and 3rd Battalions assigned to the 2nd Column of Attack. On March 21st, the advance began, and the French were pushed back. Austrian artillery pounded the French positions, and the infantry stormed the town of Austerach, but failed until the 2nd and 3rd Battalions of the Kaiser Franz Regiment were sent into the fray. They screamed and charged with bayonets, taking the town in their first attack. 37 men were left dead, with 196 wounded, and a further 22 missing. On the 25th, the regiment was ordered to clear out a forest of southwestern Germany. While advancing through the thick forest, Colonel William Louis 
was killed while leading a company of a previously wounded captain. The French were forced out of the forest by the grenadiers and soon fell back as the grenadiers steamrolled them further. Fifty men would die in the forest that day with 111 wounded as well. A further 89 were missing and the regiment was down to 2,553 men, a stark reduction of nearly 800 from what they had amassed at the start of the campaign. Lieutenant Colonel Christoph Johnson, a Chevalier of the Empire, became Colonel on April 7, 1799. The regiment would soon be detached for a campaign against Switzerland while the rest of the army remained in Germany. By May, the regiment had reached the Austrian forces fighting in Switzerland against the Swiss and French armies. On May 14th, the army broke through the fortress of Lucienstieg, with the cavalry leading the charge through the fortress. The garrison surrendered, and a single company of the 1st Kaiser Franz Infantry escorted 3,000 prisoners back to Austria. The regiment was sent in reserve as the French were pushed back, with the reinforcements Archduke Charles brought south, and they attempted to take Zurich. The French had made a fortified camp on the Zurichberg, a mountain overlooking the sprawling city. The Oberst and Light Battalions found themselves in a small detachment to clear the enemy from around Lake Zurich. Under Major General Jeliak, the detachment arrived near Zurich in early June and Messena attacked on the 3rd, pushing back the entire detachment. Jeliak would say after the battle, quote, Above all, I must emphasize the excellent attitude of Lieutenant Colonel de la Marine of the Kaiser Infantry, who with his town battalions rendered me the most excellent services, and whose attacks were an exemplary one. The regiment took two officers and 65 men captive and lost 10 dead, 38 wounded, and 13 missing. The next day, the rest of the army arrived and the attack on Zurich was prepared. There was a minor attack on the fort, but no progress was made, and the French completely abandoned the camp and the city on the 5th and 6th, respectively. A lull in the fighting appeared until August 14th, when Messina was reinforced and decided to go on the offensive. A strong defense was put up with some minor losses, and another attack was launched the next day. The Austrians were pushed back with 35 men killed from the regiment, a further 79 wounded, and 272 made prisoner. The Austrians maintained Zurich, and 26,000 Russians arrived as reinforcements. Archduke Charles wanted to attack, but divisions in the Allied Council of War caused stalling, and Massena refreshed his troops after their recent defeats. Massena attacked again at the end of August, and the French unit fighting the Kaiser Regiment were thrown out with a bayonet attack. The 26 men were made prisoner, and 20 were wounded and left behind as prisoners for the French. A grim success if you deem it solely by numbers. Five men of the regiment captured 11 Frenchmen alone, and all of them received the silver medal for bravery. Massena, however, was relentless, and attacked again on the 30th and 31st, finally pushing back the Austrians on the final day. Russian Marshal Alexander Suvarov arrived with even more manpower from Italy. On September 25th, the Austrians attacked, with the 1st Kaiser Franz Infantry Regiment charging forward as the advance guard. Five men of the Austrian Regiment swam across the river at one point, and arriving on the other side and took 19 prisoners from the French. The advance would continue, but they were eventually counterattacked by the French, and the next five days would see heavy skirmishing throughout the Swiss mountain. The regiment in these engagements lost 294 men killed, 91 captured, 47 missing, and a further company captured after they wandered around looking for glaciers for 36 hours. The Russians were completely broken and lost almost all of their equipment and artillery, along with 5,000 men after the Second Battle of Zurich, where General Hoitza of Austria was killed and 13,000 men of the Allied forces had died. The triumphant French attacked again, and by November there weren't any coalition forces left in Switzerland. At the end of 1799, Napoleon made himself first consul of France, and the Russians withdrew out of the Second Coalition. This left France against Britain and Austria. The 1st Kaiser Franz Infantry Regiment would again be deployed in Austria. The regiment did see some minor skirmishing, with each battalion being strung out and garrisoned. The 1st Battalion, however, was detached and became a part of the defense of the Rhine, and attempted to repulse the enemies crossing there, but unfortunately had to retreat. The 3rd Battalion in Fieldkirk, right on the Austro-Swiss borders, repelled attacks by the French until they were forced back due to a lack of ammo. This regiment occupied Lechtal in October, and Colonel Christoph Johnson was promoted to general on the 10th of October. Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas von Kaiser, a very fitting name for the regiment, took command. After the Battle of Hohenlinden, the army fell back and Archduke Charles retook command on December 18th. The Peace of Loinville was signed later that year, ending Austria's involvement in the Second Coalition. The regiment arrived back in Moravia in May of 1800. Austria rejoined the Third Coalition, but cautioned their allies to wait until 1806. They still, however, assembled men in July and August of 1805, and new organizational reforms gave way to four Fusilier battalions and one Grenadier battalion being formed out of the regiment. All of them were expected to have 192 men per company, however manpower would stretch this very thin. The regiment would once again be deployed in Innsbruck, arriving there in September, and on October 1st, Napoleon crossed the Rhine with over 200,000 men, with only 95,000 Austrians opposing them. Within two weeks, General Mack and his entire army was surrounded. The Kaiser Franz regiment marched into Ulm on the 8th of October, and the five, and the five battalions were immediately dispersed on garrison duty with the Grenadier Battalion moving into its own Grenadier Division with other elite formations. The army surrendered on the 17th, and the officers of the 1st Kaiser Franz Infantry Regiment were released on word of honor not to fight the French for the rest of the campaign. 
The regiment started the campaign with 2,475 men and lost 596 dead, mostly due to disease rather than combat. The men that were captured spent a brief stint in a French POW camp, but were then released and they reformed the regiment in Galicia. The 6th Battalion, left in reserve and on depot duty, would participate in the Battle of Austerlitz and was soon disbanded thereafter due to its combat losses. The regiment then entered its second phase of peacetime in the Napoleonic Wars, training up back in Olmutz in 1808. During this time, the Austrian army saw many reforms that boiled its pre-1792 extravagance down to an actual fighting force. They dismissed extra regulations in order to fight more effectively. Finally, corps, divisions, and brigades were created permanently. They would no longer be ad hoc units but full-on fighting forces, modeling the French system with each one having its own support and not needing to rely on the main force. In 1809, these new reforms would be tested. They were assigned to the 3rd Corps under Major General Therese's Brigade. The regiment didn't take part in any fighting until the Battle of Abensburg, where they would be involved in the fighting around war. They would face off against the Bavarians, who quickly pushed them back through a forest towards Alfenstetten. Reinforcements soon arrived and the line was stabilized, and fighting went on into the night. At 9 a.m. on the next day, the French attack continued. This time, they faced off against Marshal Lanz, who broke the Austrian ranks with the Cuirassier charge. The regiment faced horrific casualties in this battle. Colonel Johann Gradler was killed during the fighting in the forest. 173 men were dead and more than 300 wounded. The rest of the unit was completely cut off, becoming prisoners again for the second time in just two campaigns. 3,000 men in total were captured as Major General Terry's entire brigade was dead or captured. Major Prince Gustav Hohenlohe Langenberg was given command of the Grenadier Battalion that the regiment's grenadiers were assigned to, and it was fittingly called the Grenadier Battalion von Hohenlohe. He would fight at the Battle of Aspern Essling with his battalion, suffering 50 casualties in the second day of bitter fighting. The regiment wasn't completely out of the fight, though. Major Baumgarten escaped capture at the Battle of Abensburg and formed two battalions with just 500 recruits. Prince Gustav Hohenlohe was promoted to lieutenant colonel and took over the regiment in early June 1809. Two reserve battalions commanded by Majors Palmgarten and D. Remedi marched to join the rest of the army for the coming battle. Only 1,700 men were mustered in such a short time that most had barely any training or even their full equipment. 850 of them were literally recruited that year. The two battalions were assigned under Major General Leilenberg in the 3rd Corps under Field Marshal Lieutenant Graf Kolorart. They would be deployed to the village of Susenbrunn, opposing Marshals MacDonald, Massena, and Bernadotte in piecemeal. The morning of the 6th came and both armies prepared for the biggest fight between Austria and France that the world had ever seen. The regiment's grenadiers were sent to fight over Outer Claw and participated in the push and pull fight over there, with the village being lost and regained multiple times. Napoleon's grand battery of 105 guns fired across the field at Outer Claw and the men of the 1st Kaiser Franz Infantry who also formed the defense of the village. The regiment, however, saw no action in the entire battle, with Prince Hohenlohe recounted after the battle that, quote, the regiment had no opportunity to distinguish oneself in a special way. However, with the enemy's heavy fire, they did everything and more that could ever be expected from a force that had only been set up four weeks ago, end quote. Prince Hohenlohe himself, however, found plenty of action. When removing exhausted and wounded soldiers from the field onto carts for hospital usage, he was set upon by French cavalry, and he fought them off bravely, killing two, and the rest fled shortly thereafter. He would receive the silver medal for bravery for his actions. The Grenadiers would repel cavalry attacks at the Battle of Zanam, with the rest of the regiment arriving in the afternoon. An armistice began shortly thereafter, and the regiment rested near the town. On August 26, the regiment threw a party for the promotion of Prince Hohenlohe to colonel. However, the Peace of Schoenbrunn would soon follow, and it would mark a humiliating defeat for the Austrians. The 1st Kaiser Franz Infantry Regiment suffered horrifically in the campaigns of 1805 and 1809, with their entire regiment being captured twice and fresh troops rushed to the field, only to be ill-equipped and undertrained. The regiment was basically mothballed in 1810. Companies were set to a cap of 70 men each, and the 3rd Battalion was entirely laid off. Prisoners began returning in 1810, with many senior officers that were imprisoned now found themselves under more junior officers with less experience. The regiment burned for revenge, but was regulated to exercises strictly within their garrison, as the economy of the Austrian Empire was suffering, and they couldn't afford any more than the bare minimum. In 1812, Napoleon invaded Russia and strong-armed Austria into providing a corps to assist him in his invasion. Prince Schwarzenberg was chosen to lead this corps, and attrition in Russia quickly took its toll, with Schwarzenberg requesting 7,000 reinforcements in the summer of 1812. The first Kaiser Franz infantry was chosen to go, but was given zero support. They marched with no money, 60 cartridges per ranker, old gear, no reserve equipment, and ordered to talk to the French army for supplies. The French, however, refused outright, and the regiment would get nothing in their march. The regiment finally united with Schwarzenberg's corps and spent most of the campaign marching and countermarching, as the Austrians did not want to engage their former allies, the Russians. 
They finally participated in battle in November, fighting multiple skirmishes with the enemy, and in early December, rumors were spreading of a serious French defeat near Moscow. The winter was so hard that picket duty was shortened to just 15 minutes so that the men wouldn't freeze to death. Unfortunately, most of them still did, and in December, Schwarzenberg decided to unite with the main body of the French army. It moved at such a slow pace that it took them two hours just to cover a single mile. Finally, they reached Warsaw. Schwarzenberg left the corps, and command was given to Field Marshal Lieutenant Fremont on the 18th of February, 1813. Desertions rose immensely, and pay was continued to be delayed by more than eight months since neither the French nor the Austrian treasuries wished to supply the soldiers. The regiment was finally ordered back to Austria in the spring of 1813, just in time for the War of the Sixth Coalition. The regiment arrived back in Austria in May, and finally re-equipped and was paid in full. The 3rd Battalion was mobilized on the 1st of June, and the regiment prepared itself by drilling constantly. Napoleon was facing off against Russia and Prussia, and Emperor Franz of Austria sent an ultimatum to Napoleon, demanding territorial and political concessions in order to keep Austria on the sidelines. Napoleon declined, and therefore Austria went to war again on August 16th. The regiment would be attached to the 1st Main Army under Field Marshal Schwarzenberg, with almost 240,000 fellow soldiers and nearly 700 field guns. They would be under Major General Kallak's brigade. In early August, the 2nd Battalion would be detached and not see service with the main regiment until a year later. Their first battle was abysmal. Napoleon routed their left flank at the Battle of Dresden, cutting off thousands of men from the main army. At the battle, Hohenlohe personally led the 1st Battalion up to support a separate division's attack on Dresden, but this attack was repulsed and the 3rd Battalion's defensive action on the heights outside the city allowed the 1st Battalion to reform in good order. A French cuirassier regiment attempted to outflank the regiment on the streets and the heights and got lost. While they were standing around trying to figure out where they were, Major Count Breda dispatched four companies to fire and charge on the horsemen, nearly killing the entire unit. Newly promoted Captain Kuhn, who used to be a mere ensign, would recount, quote, with hurrah, the enemy cavalry rushed at us. Because of the persistent rain, no rifle was fired. I was surrounded by the strong mass of enemy cavalry. They loaded their pistols and shot down on the team of the first rank. At the same moment, some crossiers threw themselves into the fight. End quote. Kuhn would be captured along with the 210 men with them. However, their sacrifice allowed the rest of the regiment to get away. The unit wouldn't see combat until they decided to march to Leipzig in mid-September, and by mid-October, the coalition armies of Prussia, Austria, Russia, Sweden, and various minor German states had surrounded Napoleon in Leipzig. The regiment would find itself on the western end of the battle, across the Elster River. Under Baron Goulet, their job would be the most important of all, seizing Lindenau and by extension the only bridge in Leipzig across the Elster. If they succeeded, Napoleon and 145,000 of his men would be captured. If they failed, then the Allies would have to slog on for another year of combat. Dawn approached on October 16th, and the light infantry of the Corps skirmished with the French under Marshal Berthier. The Kaiser Regiment was sent forward and took the village of Kleins Joshua at Bayonet Point. At 5 p.m., the Young Guard stormed forward in a counterattack, but they were mowed down in their ranks by the Austrian defenders. The Young Guard wavered and broke, hunted down by Russian Cossack cavalry. That night, the Kaiser Regiment was relieved of duty and brought to Markenstadt to rest up for the next day of fighting. A truce was announced on the 17th, allowing everyone to fully prepare for the coming fight. On the 18th, members of the Kaiser Regiment awoke to a furious cannonade pounding across the land to the east of the Elster River. Their view was obscured by trees, but the main coalition attack had just begun. At dawn, the French once again attacked the village of Kleins Osher, and the light infantry was completely cut off. Major Breda rushed forward his battalion of the Kaiser infantry, but was attacked in the flank, and two companies of his unit were dispatched to deal with this flank, while the four remaining companies held their own. The brigade's support artillery now pounded the French into submission, and both sides withdrew. The brigade had only seized half of their objectives. The regiment wouldn't see any more action in the battle, but they were highly commended for their efforts. Despite holding their positions defiantly, they only lost 37 men dead and roughly 160 wounded, with 13 further missing. The regiment's grenadiers were a part of the Austro-Bavarian Corps under Marshal Verde, who blocked Napoleon's advance into France. The Battle of Hainau would see Napoleon try to break through to get home. The French grenadiers of the Old Guard stormed the Allied forces. The main body of the regiment wasn't too far behind, skirmishing with the rest of Gilai's corps against Napoleon's rear guard. 1,200 men of the Kaiser Infantry were ordered to storm the defenses of the city of Mainz later that year in November. They were ordered forward at 2 p.m. and finished taking the town at 4, a remarkable accomplishment with the rest of their brigade. The Austrians then crossed the Rhine in December. The 2nd and 4th Battalions finally rejoined the regiment after fighting sieges and storming cities all throughout Warsaw and eastern Germany. The regiment's first fight in France since the War of the First Coalition was the Battle of Aursus sur Aube. The Kaiser's infantry was in reserve until dusk, and once ordered ahead, they immediately stormed the town's bridge and seized it, establishing a small head on the other side of the river, despite losing 18 men dead and almost 75 wounded. The French retreated in the morning, leaving the Austrians victorious. Unfortunately, the regiment was in transit while Paris was taken, and would not be a part of the celebrations there. They would fight multiple skirmishes, but the war was over. The regiment would end up performing garrison and suppression duty in the French countryside during the occupation, and would not participate in the Waterloo Campaign. 
Prince Gustav Hohenlohe became general on May 1st, 1815, and the rest of the regiment would continue to serve until the dissolution of the Austro-Hungarian Empire after World War I. Overall, the regiment performed admirably in all local scenarios. They pushed back the young guard. The grenadiers went even with those of the old guard. The Kaiser regiment stormed bridges and towns with a higher success rate than most other Austrian regiments. However, they were constantly betrayed in their successes because of the incompetence of the Austrian High Command, which seemed to leak everywhere until it was finally patched in the War of the Sixth Coalition. This leakage allowed the regiment to barely participate in the most memorable campaigns of the Napoleonic Wars, specifically the 1805 and 1809 campaigns. The regiment did not receive any battle honors, but was very often commended both in reports and publicly.